Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Charles Green and I'm part of the marketing team here at Bellatrix Software and I'm going to be your host today. Firstly, thank you all very much for taking the time out of your schedules to join this call. Today we're going to be discussing smart homes and home automation. The smart home brings together key technology trends from artificial intelligence to the Internet of Things and major technology companies from Apple to Google are investing heavily in the space. It's a particularly exciting area of the technology industry and that's why we wanted to examine some of the trends in this webinar today. But we're also going to go a bit further and provide some practical guidance for how you yourselves can get started with your own home automation. And it's exactly for that reason that I'm delighted to be joined by Ernesto Baron, one of our experts here at Bellatrix. Ernesto, do you want to briefly introduce yourself? Sure thing, Charles. Uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Ernesto Baron. I am Director of Business Development here at Bellatrix Software. Prior to getting that uh, role, I was here as an iOS engineer. And I've always been involved in mobile development uh, applications as well as business consultancy towards uh, those companies that wanted to get started with mobile applications. And of course, uh, as a matter of fact, it actually evolved into something way more powerful that was IoT, and now it's being reflected as home automation kind of solutions, which is kind of great. And I've been also involved in those projects as well. So yeah, I think that's that. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, I should mention to everyone on the call today that today's session has been very open. Um, so we will be delighted to take your questions at any time, uh, and you can do that by uh, either writing them into the web conference on the chat box on the right -hand side, bottom right-hand side of your screen, or you can do, also ask questions via Twitter, and we're going to be live tweeting using the hashtag SmartHomeBSF. So please do feel free to use the hashtag to send us questions if anything comes to mind. We will do our best to take them during the call today, um, but we also have some dedicated time at the end to uh, also take your questions. But without any further ado, I want to hand over to Ernesto to jump right into the content. All right, Charles, thank you so much for that. Um, so whenever they asked me to go ahead and try to give a first glance about home automation and what it, what it actually means to people, I wanted to go ahead and try to get some formal kind of uh, uh, definition. So I believe one of the, the, the ones that we use the most in, in IT is the Gardner IT Glossary. I actually checked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago. Of course, uh, we, we the, the, the closest definition we found on, on the Gardner IT Lustre is connected home. And it basically goes ahead and tries to explain you, try to give you a general understanding towards, you know, multiple things you might have probably heard in the past, just try to concise it into one single definition. Uh, but it all it all goes around connected things and it basically mentions five specific points, I believe, yeah, five specific points which are these ones about networking, media and entertainment home security monitoring, energy management, healthcare, fitness, and wellness. And it goes all around this. If your house has uh, these five elements, it will be considered to be a connected home, according to the Garner IT Glossary. Uh, one thing to mention is that uh, Garner specifically uh, gets into the third point and uh, actually adds a little bit more there, which is uh, the home automation definition. So, according to Gardner, home automation is more related to our securing monitoring since if something happens, something else might happen as well at your home. So, that's all about that. We are, of course, uh, covering more about the connected home definition. I would, kind of, of course, give you some examples of home automation specifically, uh, some of the devices that we've just, uh, that I use personally that might probably might be very helpful for you. Um, so as, as a way of getting uh, us a little bit more context, um, I actually managed to sneak around CES this year as well. Uh, I actually uh, only had the chance to go there a couple days, the last days over the weekend. Uh, but it was very interesting at the beginning because you, you, you found, uh, it, it seemed that you were going to find, as it's the biggest uh, tech conference in, in the world, uh, kind of new stuff as you used to, you used to see in the past. Surprisingly, though, uh, this version of CES, and I'm not the only one commenting this, but it didn't it didn't necessarily bring uh, such a revolutionary uh, new things on this version. 
So it was more about uh, progressing things, uh, at least in the home automation kind of field. You wouldn't see something new that was crazily new that you just wanted to go ahead and get it as, uh, as soon as you can, but uh, it was more of about uh, just making some tweaks towards something that already existed and, you know, releasing new versions and showing to you and, uh, again, dreaming about the future of home automation, how it might look like uh, in the future, but uh, as well, uh, there were always the same kind of uh, solutions that we found here at this version of the CES. Uh, but one positive thing that I will have to mention about this specific version was that I've saw a lot of manufacturers and I actually talked with some of them uh, that they were very interested in trying to uh, get one of the atmospheres you've seen uh, out there. For example, Apple has Apple Home Kit, Google has Google Home, there's Amazon Alexa, there's Nest. Uh, so they started to pick at least one of these and, and start building uh, support for one of these platforms. Because in the past, what you will found uh, in, in one of these products was that it was basically one individual product being, uh, being used alone. So you have one application for every brand that you will buy and you won't, you won't have any sort of integration. Uh, so seeing that movement, uh, at least a little bit more powerful this time, uh, has actually uh, caught my attention very positively in, at this version of CES, uh, because now they are thinking about the, the, the consumer rather than just creating stuff that, you know, sometimes probably you won't be able to use it because it's not that convenient. Uh, so, I mean, that's that for CES. Of course, if you have any questions, uh, you are able to go ahead and ask for it. Uh, there's a lot of content that I've, I've received that version of CES. So I will be more than happy to share with you if you have uh, any doubts about that. Uh, so next up, I would like to go ahead and, and show you how to get started with home with uh, your connected home or home automation. Uh, and as I mentioned before, whenever you are, if you have a plan to go ahead and get started with one of these projects uh, for you personally, I will say try to pick up one of the uh, many atmosphere, many of the environments already exist here. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be one of these environments exclusively, but at least try to do, at least try to choose one, because whenever you are in the wild <laughs> finding uh, new gadgets for your connected home to work, uh, you will have to look for one of these icons. And you always have to look for that icon because otherwise it won't work on your integrated system around your home, right? Uh, and, and yes, a lot of brands will support a lot of these uh, a lot of these uh, environments that we have here. So there should be a lot of options to for you to go ahead and look for. But again, you should at least pick up one and then start expanding as you start buying uh, one of these gadgets, one of these uh, supports in here. Um, so once you do that, in this case specifically, by the way, we're we're about to choose uh, Apple HomeKit for the reason that uh, I, at least towards, at least for what I found, uh, speaking with some uh, people at CES, was that they found Apple Humpkin was the most challenging one for them. Because there is a special certification, in MF, it's called the MFI certification that Apple provides towards these hardware manufacturers, that they have to go ahead and accomplish before uh, anything else, it, it, it is it, it, it's got its approval. So before you can launch an application to the App Store, uh, you want to support one of these devices, you'll have to go to Apple. So uh, again, just like the beginning of the App Store, uh, it used to be very challenging, it was the most challenging App Store to get your apps on. Now with hardware, it's quite the same. So and I say at least quite the same because uh, when Apple Humpy was first released, for example, it was like the revolution. Uh, you, you see a lot of a lot of uh, cameras, uh, things, things, uh, integrations, very, very crazy integrations that you will see on the on the first video when it was first launched. But none of those devices have come out yet. Uh, we've just seen, for example, the very first webcam uh, for security. Purposes has been launched on, on C, has been announced was was announced on CES and has been just launched a couple of weeks ago, and and HomeKit already has about say two years two years and a half, so it gives you an idea of how challenging it could be for hardware manufacturers as well. 
so okay, when you go ahead and go to the store, uh, you will see uh, one of the devices. This is actually uh, coming from my devices. It was actually given to me for free. Uh, they were just uh, one of their booths we were explaining to you about uh, what, what the future looks like for them and you know you just have to spend 15 minutes with them in their boots and they'll give it to you this for free which is actually not cheap is around fifty dollars on regular store so uh, that, that pretty much gives you an idea that it's not that cheap to get started with this either but okay uh, so this is pretty much a plug uh, you just plug anything you have in your home and plug it back on the wall and it has uh, just two modes, to turn it on and to turn it off. This specific switch has a little bit more of a fancy LED light. <laughs> uh, that um, purple line that you'll see, it'll actually turn on whichever color you want. So that's kind of nice. And you are also able to dim it uh, to 100%, from 0 to 100% if you wanted to. Uh, but yeah, that's a very, very interesting thing. And again, Look for that works for Apple HomeKit kind of logo that you'll see in the first picture on the left. Uh, that actually is what you're looking for. In my case, I've chosen Apple HomeKit, so whenever I'm buying devices, I will always look for this logo because otherwise, I won't be able to have the integration that I need. You also see on the right side that they also are asking you to download an application on the App Store. Now, of course, that doesn't make any sense to where I said a couple of minutes before, since I was telling you about integration, using only one app and stuff like that. And now you are, you are seeing that they have their very own application separately. And the thing here is that even though Apple is working on integrating all those devices into one single unified solution, one of the requirements is still for you to buy, is still for you to, uh, build your very own application per brand. So you will be able to manage and probably even go farther if you wanted to. Uh, if you want to, to do some kind of specs that probably HopKey doesn't support, you like to personalize that on your app, or you like to get support from iDevices, uh, have personalized chat, whatever, you need to have your very own application. I'm gonna go in deep a little bit more about that in a couple of minutes. Uh, as we discuss, how real life home automation with HomeKit actually looks like. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. There are just a couple of concepts I'd like you to go ahead and try to see here. Uh, this is actually a picture that I got from Apple itself. Whenever they're explaining uh, to developers uh, how they should be, uh, you know, just having a regular uh, language so that we can all understand. We don't want any technicalities when, whenever we're developing because we want this to be as simple as possible. So uh, it basically has this hierarchy in, uh, that works under Home, home HomeKit. And I, by the way, uh, it also works the same way in Google Home for some reason is the same. I don't know why. Uh, but it, it makes sense. I mean, you have your home. Inside your home, you have uh, rooms. You have rooms, you, you have those accessories. And those accessories are able to provide some kind of services as well. So uh, this pretty much is a general overview about how it actually looks like. I mean, it, again, it, it makes sense, right? Home, room, and accessory. And that's the way Apple Home works, and I'll show it to you how it actually looks like on the app now. So this is a screenshot. The first application is called Home. Uh, it's the yellow icon you'll see uh, on the left there. And it actually comes for free whenever you have uh, an iOS device running iOS 10. It actually comes for free. You're able to delete it if you want to, uh, but you know it's come, it comes for being installed already in your device. And next to them, you'll see uh, some other applications that are actually also related to the home environment that we were talking about. We have an application from Philips. In this case, we're controlling some of the smart bulbs that I have at home iDevices to control a couple of switches that I got uh, for free at CES. Uh, we have the Eve, which is uh, another hardware manufacturer that has uh, not only plugs, but all, all kinds of, of sensors, motion sensors. Uh, I think probably even, uh, uh, I think it was a flood sensor, something like that, that you can install your home. Um, these are kind of new. They're still showing up uh, on the store. so. 
but yeah, as you can see, I, I have three individual applications in there. And again, the reason for this is because Apple is, is actually requiring you to have one of these applications, even though you are you are being integrating uh, in, in, in a couple of minutes. In, I mean, they are asking you to have this application because you, they want you to give support to your customers. Very much that's, that's the, the main reason. But the thing that happens here is that Apple Home works with an integrated database. And these applications that you'll see here, like Devices Eve, will be either editing that database and consuming from that database. So that way, if I add one uh, new bulb that I found on the Hue application, I will be able to automatically see it on the Home application and vice versa. If I add a, a, a plug on Home, I will be able to see my devices. So that's pretty much the way it goes there. Um, the application looks like this whenever you are, um, whenever you open it. Uh, this is the apartment. I have some favorite scenes, some favorite accessories. That's the first tab. You'll see that that's the home tab that you'll see at the left. And you're able to add multiple homes uh, to this home application. In this case, it could be my apartment, and I could add another home, say, in my office, or if I have a beach house, I will add the beach house there as well. Uh, this is just a matter of organizing your things here. So I have couple of bulbs, plugs, and well, that fun that you'll see there, uh, it's actually a, a plug as well uh, that only turns on and off my fan. I uh, have a couple sensors there. I was about to get the camera, but again, it was just released a couple weeks ago, and I just couldn't get it in stock. Uh, but you should al also be able to see the live feed of that live camera back at the bottom of one of your accessories. It's very nice integration that they've done there. And I also have at uh, the bottom some favorite scenes. Now, favorite scenes are just uh, uh, a couple of pre-programmed accessories that you just put there to do a specific kind of things. For example, good night will turn off all my lights, including sometimes my fan, uh, if it's not that hot. And uh, if I had a lock mechanism here, it'll also lock my door, you know, you get the idea. Just pretty much trying to pre-program everything as according to the scene that you are into. If we have visit, we will be all the lights to 100%. Um, you know, you get the idea. It's pretty much pre-programming stuff. And as we turn it on and off, uh, you are able to actually uh, see it just like that, uh, control it. And of course, if, if somebody else controls this, because you are able to give access, by the way, to some other your family members, both forever, permissions that are forever and permissions that are just provisionally, you'll be able to see the status of the light, the status of the switch, the status of the sensor if you have one there, uh, instantaneously, right? It's going to be a, sort of a nightclub mechanism. It works with iCloud very, 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 very well. Uh, and of course, in this case, uh, I'm able to access my apartments, uh, both accessories and scenes from outside my house because I have a hub on my house that is always on. In this case, will be the Apple TV, or we, you can also use an, an iPad, uh, an iPad Mini or an iPad Air that you have at your home all, all the time. It could serve you as a hub because the communication is it's more direct to your own home. So there's you no know, third party service that is actually providing you uh, with the connection and probably, it's, you know, it's, it's nothing like that. It's very direct. Your uh, iPhone communicates to your Apple TV and your Apple TV communicates to another hub to control the bubs or, or directly to the switches or directly to the, to the sensors, stuff like that. It's very direct. So as long as your Apple TV is always on, or you have an iPad Air there that is always on your home, you will be able to control your accessories and the scenes from outside your house. Um, and of course, the, the other tab is about the rooms, so you can add multiple rooms here. Again, this is just a way of organizing. Um, right now, I just have a couple of them, probably around, uh, I don't know, 12 <laughs> accessories. I know they're not that a few, but I uh, have just 12. But for example, in, 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 in the bulbs, uh, the, the storage kit of the bulbs come with uh, 
with a special kind of hub that connects to your router. And that hub is, a, is actually able to control up to 50 bulbs. So you're able to control 50 Philips Hue bulbs that are around your house. And if you don't have any type of organization, you are pretty much going to have bulbs everywhere. And you won't be able to realize where, where did you leave that smart bulb and how, how are you able to turn it on and off. So it's just a matter of organization, uh, the thing of creating rooms and then, you know, adding accessories to that specific room and stuff like that. Um, then I like to touch upon automation. This is the third type of automation. Uh, automation again only happens when you have an Apple TV connected to your uh, at your home on an app, app, Apple iPad Air. The reason for this is because all this processing will actually happen locally. Okay, I on either your Apple TV or your iPad. Uh, so that way you are pretty much unattached from, uh, I mean, you could be at uh, Barcelona without any internet connection and those automation uh, things will always happen as, as you have programmed to, to happen. So in this case, for example, um, I just set up for uh, the 1 a.m. daily, I will have performed one uh, a zine that I have called Good Night. And again, Good Night will actually do something that I have pre-programmed to it. So whenever the Apple TV's clock hits 1 a.m., this good night zine will trigger. The same as 2 a.m. daily, I have, you know, uh, one when it's to be controlled, in this case, turns off my fan. You know, you get the idea. You just keep, keep on adding uh, automation kind of things. Uh, one very useful one is here at sunset daily. Uh, so whenever the, the sun goes out, just uh, perform the scene that is we are home, which is basically turning on the the, uh, the lights at a certain level of dim. So that way, you just don't you just forget about turning on your lights and you know things like that. It's it's very convenient, I believe. We have a couple more uh, automation tasks here to share. Uh, these are geolocation kind of uh, uh, tasks. When I arrive to my home, there's a scenery call Ernest arrived. And when I leave my home, there's a senior color must to left. So he knows when I arrive what to do, when I leave what to do. So he makes sure I, I, I didn't forget my, I don't know, coffee turn on or uh, I, I didn't forget my, my, my lights turn on or whatever. It actually knows uh, when I leave things are your location and performs certain activities there. Uh, of course, if one of your accessories is controlled, sometimes you want to remind the other accessory to be controlled as well. Say, for example, you turn on your one of your of your living living one of your living room lights, and you have four, so you have created an automation here to automatically remind the other three to turn on as well. And there's one other type of automation that is regarding sensors. Um, I think it's specifically to camera sensors, which again uh, was kind of very difficult to get since it was just released. But it's basically a camera that is being placed on your on your house. Whenever it detects some movements at some specific time, it will be able to do something. Like if you have an alert, an alarm system, whatever, it will be able to trigger it on, or you know. You can just um, get your imagination flow. It's just like programming. You're able to do whatever you want to do with this device. It's kind of very cool. You have a totally dedicated computer at home that will be able to run these automations. Again, it can be an iPad, it can be an Apple TV. And uh, at the very beginning, I show you some of the favorite sceneries and favorite uh, accessories that we that I have placed specifically in the home application. And one of the greatest benefits that you get in iOS 10 whenever you upgrade is that you have these sheets that go from bottom to top that are called that is called the the control center. You have different sheets for you know controlling your lights, your music, but you also have this special kind of sheet new in iOS 10 that is actually able to give you access to your favorite uh, accessories. Here, for example, I'm dimming the light to 50%, so it's not that bright. I'm able to turn on the fan. I'm able to go ahead and, and manage my switches. And again, this is actually back and forth. For example, if somebody else controls the light and I just swipe from down to top and I access control center and these accessories, 
I will be able to see the current status of that accessory. You will see that there's a living room main closed, and well, it's not shown right now, but there was a living room uh, main window that's actually a sensor. So whenever the, I cannot control that. If I tap there, I won't be able to do anything, but I will be able to see the status of that. So I will be able to go ahead and see if my windows are open or closed, things like that, you know, you get the idea. And this control center you are able to access without even unlocking your phone. So it's very straightforward, very, very fast to go ahead and access your devices. And this level of integration, uh, I've never seen in any other platform before. Uh, and it's very convenient and very straightforward. And again, all these devices that you have here, uh, you're able, you're also able to access them with Siri if you wanted to. I found it not to be that convenient, uh, but you can press the home button and speak to Siri. Uh, Siri will understand what are the name, the names of the uh, of the lights that you've set here. She'll she'll understand about the dimming percentage. She'll understand everything. You just have to tell her and she will be able to perform that for you. So uh, that's how actually home automation on, on HomeKit looks like. Uh, next up, I think I, we can uh, discuss a little bit about what developers should know about this. <laughs> this is actually one of the checks that Steve Jobs show uh, one of the WWDC conferences regarding all, all the money he was uh, Apple has given to developers for creating applications. So, uh, and the reason why I put this is because I believe it's a very, very nicely growing market. I think uh, it has a, a decent future for all of us. I was just speaking with one of the one of the Intel executives that used to work there. He was actually telling me uh, how how amazing has he seen the evolution of processors that you, they used to cost thousands of dollars and now you can get them for just a couple cents for IoT kind of uh, developments, a couple cents, you know, one dollar and a half, things like that. I don't want to be over, uh, I don't want to exaggerate on pricing, but you know, the pricing for IoT processor, which I'm going to write this little processor that will do just simple stuff, or it's, it has really decreases in over the time. So, And the, the things that you can do as a developer are pretty much uh, limitless, I believe. You're able to do a lot of things here. And I believe it will continue to grow with the help of uh, of machine learning as well. Machine learning has, has to pay a, a very good way in here. It's going to help us a lot as well uh, regarding the future of home automation. Um, so developers in here should all only try to know uh, those couple of uh, definitions we talked about before, because Apple and its SDK specifically, talking about Apple here, uh, has those definitions about home, scenes, accessories, you know, you should be able to know what's that. Uh, they also create uh, things like zones, which are, uh, I believe it was a, a couple of rooms altogether. So, you know, you create a zone there. Uh, there. There are a couple of hierarchies that you should be able to know, of course. All of that documentation is, is provided on developer.apple.com under the human interface if you wanted to, or on uh, the developer guideline towards Apple HomeKit. Uh, it's not that simple, but you will see an Xcode whenever you have an application that you have under capabilities a HomeKit switch to go ahead and just uh, provide support to HomeKit. So you're just supposed to be just uh, turning it on and it all should work like magic, but you know it's not like that. <laughs> There's a couple of things you have to do as well, but if you um, go ahead and run towards the, the, docu the documentation, uh, basic requirements are, of course, to join the developer program, uh, create an Xcode application with whatever uh, per personalization you're, you're willing to do, add your Apple ID to account preferences, and, uh, and then just turn on this switch in here to enable Apple HomeKit, and then it begins the fun because you you will get started with some testing and try to see if the things work as you were expecting to work. Um, you have again this iCloud kind of integration as well, so you have to think about multiple applications accessing the 
HomeKit integration, the HomeKit integration accesses HomeKit database, and HomeKit database being integrated into the cloud for simultaneously syncing. Uh, so there's a lot of science to go ahead and try. It's not rocket science, by the way, but there's a lot of things to go ahead and learn here, uh, which makes it very, very interesting to go ahead and have a deep look at about you know, this specific HomeKit uh, SDK. It's kind of very nice. Uh, the documentation is very straightforward. As you can see this, uh, this graph is also from Apple. So they try to be as much as straightforward as possible. Uh, I believe it's a, a good way to start uh, if you have the possibility to do it. And, and once you're done, you can probably start uh, investigating, researching some other platforms as well. I, I believe Amazon Alexa is a very open one as well. It's very, very nice to go ahead and, and to investigate that. And besides, the Amazon Echo Dot, which is basically this voice assistance, is about $50. So uh, lots of people are actually trying to get those. And, and you get a whole hub in your home for 50 bucks, which is the price of the Switch, if you remember back a couple of slides ago. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for me. I believe if you don't have any questions, Charles, you might be able to join me, help me out here. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, firstly, many thanks, Ernesto. It's uh, been a fascinating presentation. Um, with that, I want to remind everyone that we are we'd be delighted to take your questions. And again, you can do that either via Twitter using the hashtag uh, SmartHomeBSF, or you can also uh, ask a question via the chat box in the uh, in in the conference system as well. And actually, Ernesto, whilst you were talking, we had one question that uh, that's already come in. Uh, that's it, very, very much related to what you were just talking about, and that is, what should I, as a software engineer, know when creating support for the platform? Sure. Um, so basically, you you'll have to realize that uh, you have to build one application to support the accessories you've been asked to support. And sometimes you have to support multiple devices because under one application, for example, well, in the case of Eve, which is one of these companies that I've mentioned before, they have multiple kind of gadgets. So you have to think about them all. I mean, some, some of them are switches. So it's like a Boolean kind of thing, just turning on and off. Some of them are uh, lights, but those lights are dimmable. So you have to manage the percentage of those. Uh, some lights change color, so you, be, you should be able to go ahead and show a, a, a color palette in there as well. Uh, and, you know, things like that uh, you should be able to take into consideration as well as those definitions that are, you know, what is a home, what's a scene, what is a room, what is an accessory, because you will see on the code, uh, at least on the HomeKit SDK, that even the code has those names. So it's like uh, register new home dot two points, you know, and you have to fill in the blanks. So knowing those definitions will definitely help you out. And as well as knowing that you will be able, you will be uh, working with a centralized database, which is the home key database, uh, to go ahead and share information. So it's a very, very interesting Field. Uh, if you like to get started, you can al always uh, contact me if you wanted to, or just uh, reach towards the Apple documentations. Okay, super. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, and also, we have a, another sort of related question to that, which has come in, which is that um, this uh, person has said that they're, they're interested in Apple HomeKit for a new construction project, where they have selected some components like cassette switches. I understand that's a kind of a, a form of like a wireless uh, switch, um, and but they're having some difficulty bringing everything together. Do you have any uh, tips or any advice to them? Sure. Um, they are. They are. They are in the construction project, right? Uh, it's like they're they're building those those devices. They're hardware manufacturers, I believe so. Uh, uh, they don't say in the comment if uh, the person that left the comment could uh, let us know, but I, I assume that's yes. Okay, sure. So yeah, for building it, bringing it back together, it's very difficult, at least on the HomeKit integration, because. Uh, Again, Apple has a lot of barriers there. They don't want to put any device because most likely if your device makes it to the HomeKit uh, kind of cert, 
and you will be probably even be uh, on the App Store being showing off and stuff like that. So they, they take very seriously whenever they want to approve or not one of those accessories. And uh, the, the, the very first tip that I'll tell you is try to contact engineers personally because sometimes they're quite a, a bit specific kind of tasks that you should be able to figure it out very, uh, in a very short period of time. The best place to do this is, of course, the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference because not only do you, do you have uh, different sessions in here, but you're also able to have uh, the opportunity to have a one-to-one -one talk uh, with engineers. So you will be able to go ahead and figure out what's the problem, how could you bring it all together. Uh, you ultimately know. Okay, excellent, thank you. And we have another further question which has come in. Uh, that is, what about some of the challenges for quality assurance engineer? Oh, that's a good one. Um, actually, uh, the Apple platform, whenever you're done uh, building your first application, provides you, uh, I wouldn't say, yeah, well, it, it's called a simulator. Uh, wants to simulate some stuff so before you have something going on you are able to go ahead and you know have some switching controlling palette, palette color selection things like that that you will be able to switch from outside and see how it is being reflected on your application as well so QA might have a little bit of fun there because uh, it's it's a new tool it's not that known uh, Apple uh, platforms are usually not that known uh, on the, on the wild, but it's, it's very, very nice. It saves you a lot of time. But whenever you are in the field testing some things, replicating those problems or bugs that you might probably find there, that could be a little bit tricky because uh, there are some environmental, you know, kind of changes that might happen over there and that you won't be able to replicate that easily. Uh, it has happened to me uh, that sometimes, you know, Bluetooth integration doesn't work whenever you have a magnetic field around things like that uh, will be able to happen very, very easily. So that's a bit of a challenge <laughs> to go ahead and try to replicate those those scenes. But other than that, I mean, the tools are going to be quite the same. Uh, just adding a couple of specific kind of uh, tools towards testing, but that's pretty much it. Okay, super, thank you. And just a reminder, keep the questions coming. Again, you can do that either via Twitter on with the hashtag SmartHomeBSF, or again, uh, please do uh, keep the questions coming via the chat box in the conference system. Uh, and as just mentioning that, we have another question which has come in, uh, and that is, how do you see home automation uh, in five years' time? What's your vision for, for home automation? I see home automation being... Uh, working hand-in-hand -hand with um, machine learning, very, very integrated uh, kind of thing. You know, you've seen uh, that now I was I was setting some automation kind of uh, tasks, you know, at 1 a.m. I want everything to turn off, my doors to be locked down. But I've seen that over the time, I could be having some kind of sensors around the house from which um, some data might be accumulated and um, in some way or other my house learn about my habits and about the things that should happen and will happen to kind of predict kind of the things. And automatically, if it detects that I fall asleep over the night or whatever, it will automatically start uh, switching off all the lights and locking up my doors without me having to specify a, a specific time in there. Uh, but of course, uh, you can start dreaming about multiple other things. But I also think that um, voice commands uh, I was I was telling you that Siri integration was not that good, but you know having a centralized voice command uh, tower like the Amazon Echo inside your house to be able to just say uh, the name, for example, Alexa, do something. It's it's something that I, I see uh, progressing in the future as well. Right now, it's not able, for example, to recognize one person to person. So if I say Alexa, what's on my calendar for today? She will say what, what she has on one calendar, which is the calendar that I set it up to. But in the future, I see Alexa being able to identify for multiple uh, people inside my house and be able to say, hey, okay, so uh, this person is asking me for his calendar. That's your calendar, you know. 
kind of multi-user kind of things. So with those two things, I think we're, we will be able to be achievable in five-year time. Yes or yes. Uh, I, I, really, I really think so. Looking forward to that. Okay, super. Yeah, it's certainly, it's a very uh, exciting time in, in the space. Um, with that, actually, we don't have uh, any further questions. We'll give it an extra minute or so before to let people um, ask uh, any questions that come to mind. But I would say if, you know, on reflection, having listened to the call today, that any questions do come to mind, uh, then please do reach out to us. Um, we'd be more than happy to take your questions or to do a follow-up call with you. Uh, I hope that you've really could tell from today's presentation from Vanessa that you know, we're here at Electrics, we are you know, really very passionate about technology, um, and particularly some of these new areas such as home automation, which kind of, you know, as mentioned earlier, have a really big impact uh, of, um, on, our, on our lives. Um, but I see we, we don't have any further questions at this time. Uh, Ernesto, do you have any final comments you want to leave the audience with? Um, yeah, sure. But basically, uh, again, trying to encourage some of the people that perhaps are going to look for some projects regarding um, home automation will be will be great for you. I think you'll learn a lot of things here. Um, not only the technical aspect, because there's a lot of things that you probably haven't seen in the technical aspect as well, but you'll get a, a very good understanding of what tech can actually be able to do. Uh, uh, because again, you have a, a computer living in your pocket, and then little computers at your home, little computers at your offices. There's a lot of science to go ahead and, and do a lot of research there. So I feel very confident it will help you out a lot, and a lot of uh, engineers will also be 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 asked with this this uh, skills as well. Okay, excellent. Uh, with that, I'd like to yeah, thank you very much, Ernesto, for sharing your expertise today. It's been greatly appreciated. Uh, and thank you to everyone on the court day for, for joining us today. As mentioned, if you have any follow-up questions, please do let us please do let us know. Uh, but with that, I think we can bring the call to a close and wish everyone a very pleasant rest of the day. Thank you, Charles.